Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to my study once again, and welcome to Psalm 16, which I believe is the last in the series of Psalms um, in our Christ Central Red Hill devotional. So welcome also to anyone who picks this up later uh, online. Um, I'm grateful to my wife who has let me use her uh, device, her iPad, and I hope it's going to work. I hope that my other one's not going to suddenly warm up and interfere with this, but um, it just it is running very slow. Anyway, let's just pray. Our Heavenly Father, I do pray that as we gather together in your name, you will have a word for each one of us, that you will have a word of comfort and encouragement, and that we will also have a a, a spirit of thankfulness for all that you have done for us and all that you have provided for us. In Jesus' name, amen. The reading is uh, Psalm 16, and I'm reading from the NIV. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. As for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those will increase who run after other gods. I will not pour out their libations of blood or take their name on my lips. Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup, you have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me even at night. My heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with everlasting pleasures at your right hand. May God bless that uh, reading to us. When I start to uh, prepare a, a, a talk such as this, I look back at my uh, records and see what um, God might have revealed to me on it in the past. But also, I pray that it won't just be reheated leftovers, but God will give us something new as of this morning. Because after all, this is the living word. And when we come to the word of God, um, by his spirit, he brings out new things for each day, even out of a passage we might have read before, where he might have brought us uh, to some other message. So as I look at this, the first thing that stood out for me was those rather strange words. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Or in one, some version, it's just the lines. As a young Christian, I read that and I thought, what's that all about? The lines have fallen to me in delightful places. And I think even my mother um, years ago spoke of that verse, even though she'd been a widow from a very young age and brought me up on her own. Uh, she could actually say the lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. The way things have worked out ultimately have been for the good. Literally, of course, it means boundary lines, as in the limits of your property, your fences and uh, your hedges. Incidentally, I can uh, say, yes, uh, I, the Lord has been good to me. 
uh, not to go into too much detail, but um, most houses, when you look at a row of houses, their fences are at right angles to the road. The houses go along there and the fences goes down the garden. Ours is different. Ours is quite unusual. Uh, the architect in the 1930s built them due south. So although the road runs along here, the houses are set at a funny angle and staggered, which means we've got that awkward uh, drive in at a funny angle. But the advantage is the houses face due south at the back, which is a great advantage for the sun. So literally, the lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. And as I say, when I look at this verse initially, I think, oh, I can identify with this. Here is the psalmist, perhaps an old man in his life. Lots of things have happened, lots of tough things. Uh, 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 but in his old age, he's sitting in his palace and he's looking back and he can say, oh, yes, uh, things have worked out well for me. I thank you, Lord. My lot has been a good one. But the new thought I want to bring you today is that this is possibly and probably not the case. It's not when he's old and comfortable and uh, in his old age, looking back in his life. Scholars differ, of course, but it seems to me most likely that it was written when he was it at peril for his life, when he was an outlaw, when he was a castaway, when King Saul was out to get him and he could find refuge nowhere. He went all over the place, uh, hiding from the wrath of Saul, the king, who was out to kill him. And so it was in this desperation when he said, uh, my portion is good. My lot is good because you are my portion. I've actually lost my inheritance of where I was and where I was as a, a, as a military commander and so forth. And now I'm with a, with a band of outlaws and I'm running for my life. And yet you are my portion. So that's my message for all of you today. Some of you, and I hope all of you, whatever your situation, can look back on your life and look back on your situation today and say, yes, God has blessed me. My lot, my portion has been great. But most of all, I've got you. If I compare myself to other people, maybe my lines, my house, my shape of my garden, my material possessions is not as good as many people. And I just wish, if only, if only I hadn't made that decision, if only I hadn't made that mistake, if only I could have so-and-so. I remember a pastor once uh, preaching and saying that the words, if only, are like a dagger that you stab into yourself and you twist it round. If only I had the next thing, if only that hadn't happened. Don't stab yourself this morning. Rather, come with me to this psalm where you praise and thank God for everything that has gone well. As I say, I'm perfectly aware of the fact that some of you are struggling. Some of you are not in the place that you would like to be. But let me remind you that you are in the loving arms of your Lord Jesus. He is your lot. He is your portion. You see, the meaning of this phrase, my lot and my portion, goes back to the division of the land when the children of Israel occupied the promised land. Different tribes were given different territories. And I don't know if any of you would confess to ever being bored as a youngster in the service in the days we had paper Bibles. And if you were bored with the preacher, you just look at the maps because at least they were pretty. And you could look at the various allocations of the land. Issachar got this bit, Gad got this bit. But it's a bit like, say you have a father or a grandfather who's written his will and he's just telling his children what he's done with it. You're all going to have equal shares, or at least they, they couldn't make the land exactly equal, but you're all going to have a share. But you lot, the Levites, the sons of Levi, you're not going to have anything. 
you're not going to have any boundary uh, uh, of land because you are the priests. You're serving in the temple. So you've got me. Suppose a father says to his, his sons, oh, you're, uh, you're all going to have a share, but one of you, you're not getting anything because you've got me. In a sense, that's the picture here. You may not have got, in terms of earthly uh, estates, you may not have got what you might have liked to have had in, in other sort of ways, emotionally and relationally, you may not have got what you might have had, if only I had that. But let me remind you that you have almighty God. You have the loving Lord Jesus. You have other, I was gonna say fringe benefits, that's not quite the right word, but these priests who did not have, as the Levites, they did not have a land yet. Uh, they did have uh, the tithes of all the other people that came to the temple. They did have, and I've been looking at this, and I, here's another bit I don't think I've noticed before. You know, I've got rather strange eating habits or preferences. Um, those of you that know me know I'm a rather funny eater, uh, what I like and what I don't like. One of my favorites is ox cheek, or my real favorite, I suppose, is shoulder of lamb. Now, here was one of the perks that they actually got, uh, these priests. If you look in Deuteronomy 18.3, not now, their inheritance was to have the shoulder of lamb. When the, when, when the offering was brought, a sheep or a lamb, they were allowed to keep the shoulder for themselves. And the ox, they were allowed to keep the cheek, which is a very nice cut of meat. So my point is this. You may not have the allocation of land or every other thing in life that you might wish to have. But let me remind you that your inheritance is the Lord himself. You have the Lord himself. And with that, of course, he does bring in many benefits in this life. Um, notice there's that word pleasing. The boundary lines have fallen to me in pleasant places, P-L-E-A-S. You get the same thing in the last verse, in eternal joy in your presence, there will be eternal pleasures forevermore. So you also have this inheritance for the future. My time is gone, but let me not finish without pointing you to Jesus. The other passage that of course stands out here is those last ones towards the end, where he says, David says, he's thinking of himself, I trust you not to abandon me to the grave, don't let me die, keep me safe in this uh, guerrilla uh, life situation that he's in. But then you get those prophetic words that are always taken to point to Jesus. You will not let your Holy One, CDK, you have made known to me the paths of life. Jesus's body is not going to decay he's going to rise again so i point you to jesus and indeed to whit sunday which is coming up now pentecost this verse that i have the privilege to speak on is actually quoted by peter at pentecost which is next sunday he actually quotes it in his great sermon in acts 2 and not only that the apostle paul uh, uh, quotes it when he preaches in antioch because of christ we can live with fullness of joy. Because of Christ, our lot is good. Can I close by doing what I like to do? I think I've just about got time to read a verse of a hymn. I think I'm getting a nod. You see, this portion, this lot, comes up in an old hymn, one of the ones that we do actually sing sometimes. When peace like a river attendeth my soul. When sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot, there's the word, my lot, my portion, my inheritance. Whatever my lot, and the man who wrote it had some terrible tragedies, but that's another story. Whatever my lot, you have caused me to say. It is well, 
it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet and trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trumpet shall sound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. So I pray that whatever your lot today, it will be well with your soul. Amen. <laughs>